in uh, clinical practice, a case-based approach. Again, reminder, your time is 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Uh, 15 minutes, sorry. We'll give you a reminder just two minutes before you're due to finish. Thank you very much. Thank you. Slides are visible, I think. Yes, thank you. Okay. So <clears throat> thank you, organizers, especially to Thangavelu sir and Dadbagumare madam, who are organizing a very wonderful IJPP CME every year. The group is conducting the CME, and we used to wait for the CME for excellent talks. So I'm very happy that I was being invited for to give a 15 minutes talk on genetic testing in clinical practice in this session. I will go to my topic. So what are the indications when we will do a genetic testing in our pediatric practice? So number one is diagnosis of a genetic disorder. When you are suspecting a genetic disorder, it can be a chromosomal disorder or a single gene disorder, but you have to, for confirmation of diagnosis, you have to do the genetic testing. Then you want to do prenatal diagnosis when first child is affected or there's a family history of a genetic disorder or you are identified some ultrasound abnormalities where you have to identify a genetic disorder. In those situations, you have to do a genetic testing in amniotic fluid or chorionic villus sampling, depending on the situation. And we will collect the sample during the antenatal period and we'll do the genetic testing. Third thing is pre-symptomatic diagnosis, especially in adult onset genetic disorders like Huntington's disease or uh, <clears throat> Huntington's disease, spinocerebellar ataxia, this Frederick's attack. So this type of conditions, sometimes you may have to do a pre-symptomatic diagnosis. Similarly, in adult or some cancer, familiar cancer-prone diseases, we will do pre-symptomatic diagnosis. Fourth is carrier screening. Carrier screening is when you are having a, a two or three children are affected and you know that most probably the parents are carriers. You can do prenatal diagnosis only when confirmation of diagnosis can be done. So this carrier screening can be done in the high risk families where multiple members are affected or in high risk population where this population is having increased risk of having some diseases like even in beta thalassemia and some of the North Indian population or in Ashkenazi Jews where this actually is we are doing as a screen. And fifth is the newborn screening where now genetic testing is not regularly recommended anywhere in the world except in some small population. But in future, next five or 10 years, newborn screening also, genetic testing will come where we can have a genetic chip where we can have a all diagnosis. Why we should investigate for the etiology? Because accurate diagnosis will help in accurate prognosis, which will help in accurate risk of recurrence and genetic counseling and better prenatal diagnosis. So always we should try to have a confirmation of diagnosis. For this, we are having a so many tests like cytogenetic, symbol karyotype, fish, MLPA, DNA diagnosis, and high-end tests like RACGH and exome sequencing. So next 10 minutes or 12 minutes, we will discuss about rational use of diagnostic test by illustrating some of the cases. Commonest is simple test which we will use, a pediatrician or a geneticist will do a conventional karyotype, which is a metaphase or a prometaphase. It uses light microscope, higher resolution GTG bandit can be done, and requires dividing cells, and about 10 to 14 days is a turnaround time. This is the simplest test, less cheapest or less costly test, which can be done in a suspected genetic disorder. So what are the indications for a karyotype? Suspected chromosomal abnormalities, like if you are suspecting Down syndrome, you have to confirm the disease, you have to do a karyotype to confirm the Down syndrome. Unexplained intellectual disability, disorders of sex development, where we have to look for whether it is a 46XX or 46XY, because now the classification is basically whether it is a 46 XS DSD or a 46 XY DSD. So sex of rearing and classification, diagnosis, everything is based on the karyotype where we have to do. Short stature in a prepubertal female, always you have to do a karyotype to rule out Turner syndrome. Recurrent pregnancy loss, parents has to be screened for balanced translocation carrier. Infertility, the couple has to be screened. Parents of a child with structural chromosomal abnormality. Some malignancies, Neoplastic anemia, especially constitutional neoplastic anemia, Fanconi syndrome, and prenatal diagnosis all are indications for karyotype. So this is a simplistic case, just for a starting date, any child, any pediatrician can diagnose, so Down syndrome. But if you do the karyotype, 
there are various types of chromosomal abnormality like classical trisomy 21, non-disjunction trisomy 21. All these things are translocation. This is 13, 4, 21 translocation. It is 14, 21 translocation. It is 21, 21 translocation. It is a ring 21. But all these chromosomal karyotype will phenotypically shows a Down syndrome, which you cannot differentiate by looking at the phenotype. So you have to do a karyotype for confirmation of what is the cytogenetic abnormality, then only you can do the genetic counseling properly. Apart from this routine, conventional Down syndrome, Edward syndrome, Patavo syndrome, cases like this, first child, born consanguineous parents, multiple congenital abnormalities, cleft palate, retrognathia, congenital heart disease, polydactyly, hypotony, and global developmental delay. So naturally, first test is karyotype. So if you have done the karyotype of the child, you can see that there is some extra material in chromosome number 17. This is a normal chromosome number 17. Some extra material is there, but we don't know from which area this has come, but definitely it is a derivative 17. Some extra material is there, which causes all this phenotype. So when we have done the parental karyotype, we were able to know that there is 8 to 17 translocation is there. 8 to 17 translocation, balanced translocation in the parent. So actually it's a partial trisomy 8, which causes all this problem. And parents having balanced translocation. So amniocentesis has to be done in the next baby. Next baby amniocentesis has been done and they developed that. They had a normal baby and they delivered a normal baby. It is a child with the Fanconis anemia. As you know, it's a classical condition. Hyperpigmentation, aplastic anemia, microcephaly. This uh, uh, knuckle pigmentation is there. This pigmentation is there. So aplastic anemia. So it's a Fanconis anemia where you can do a chromosomal breakage study has to be done. But it's a special protocol. You have to do the breakage study with the mitomycin C. But you can see that previous karyotype I have shown such a beautiful chromosomal pattern you have seen. But here you can see that multiple breaks are there, multiple joints between multiple chromosomes. So this is called a tetraradials, triradials, multiple breaks, which shows that the child is having a chromosomal breakage syndrome. And like Fanconi, Bloom syndrome, attacks acetyl injectasia, so many conditions have this type of breakage. This is another condition where you have to do the chromosomal breakage. This is another baby with the first child, non-consanguineous parents, multiple congenital abnormalities. Antenatal scan shows 33 weeks shows bilateral microphthalmia, left diaphragmatic hernia, stomach and bowel and chest cavity, and polyhydramnios. So definitely, this is a child with the multiple abnormalities. Baby expired at postnatal day five. So we got blood sample for karyotype. So we have done the karyotype, which shows that we are having some extra material. It probably looks like 22, but we don't know that. It's a marker chromosome type or some derivative 22 but normal 222 is there. So it is the extra material which causes the phenotype. So when we have done the parental karyotype, there's a 1222 translocation is there. Here also, it is mainly because the one of the parent, that is mother is having a balanced translocation, which causes this recurrent problem. And there is a 33%, one third of children can have this, um, two third of children have recurrent problems of various abnormality. One third can have a normal karyotype. So every pregnancy, we have to do the amniocentesis to look for the abnormality. But conventional cytogenetics have certain limitations, like resolution is limited, test needs actively dividing cells, labor intensive, turnaround times 10 to 14 days, required skilled personnel. So we can do some advanced tests, like in this patient, where there is a microcephaly, large dependently, various problems. We are having extra material. Parental karyotype is normal. So we don't know from this area is came. We have done the microarray to look for from where it came. So it is actually a extra material or a gain in the chromosome two, which confirmed the diagnosis. So microarray will give you this abnormality. Similarly, this is also give you smaller abnormality. It's a copy number variance can be identified. It has high resolution, less than 200 to 300 KB. So a small abnormality, small abnormality in the chromosomes, which cannot be identified by the conventional karyotype, can be identified microarray. So we here we are using DNA, not dividing cells. So easy to transport, easy to do, but it's a costlier test. But it cannot detect polyploidy, balanced translocation, and low-level mosaicism. And it is not a freely available, little bit costlier. In India, it's somewhere around 15,000 is the cost for microarray. So microarray, you can, in the case of micro deletion syndrome, like D. George syndrome, where it is a, we know that micro deletion is in a particular area. We don't have to do microarray. We can do fluorescent in situ hybridization where some signal will be absent. Here it is present, 
here it is absent. So directly we can identify. But here problem is we have to look for Dijoch syndrome in this case, or in this case, we can look for Williams syndrome. So Dijoch syndrome, Williams syndrome, Smith Magnus syndrome, this type of specific microdeletion syndrome, we can do fluorescent in situ hybridization to confirm the diagnosis. We don't have to go directly to uh, microarray. But here problem is you have to look for locus specific probe. Only that particular area can be tested, not general chromosomes can be tested. Similarly, this type of deletions we can detect by MLPA also. So in standard micro deletion syndrome, there are two types of tests can be done. One way you can do this specific fish, or you can do a multiplex ligation dependent probe amplification. It's a DNA based test through which you can see that everywhere DNA is same, but in this area, these two genes, only 50% is there. That means area where these two genes are there is deleted. By phenotypically, this patient is having 4P deletion. So this can also be used for these micro deletion syndromes. But this is a spectral karyotyping or multiple, just for this is not routinely available. But here we can color the entire chromosome, but this is done only on the research arena, but it is not having a routine clinical connotations. Coming to molecular methodology, next three four minutes, I will just uh, go through DNA extraction, PCR amplification, sequencing, and other methods. Here you can have a various types of methods. This is done for the single gene disorders like spina muscular atrophy, thalassemia, etc. So when you know the mutation, you can directly test the mutation. This is called targeted mutation testing, or you can look for targeted gene sequencing, or you can do MLPA for deletion and duplication like SMA and DMD. Gene panels for multiple genes causing phenotype like clinical exome or advanced test like whole exome or even whole genome in situation where you don't know which gene is involved, but you are definitely having some single gene disorder. Advanced test by NGS technique can be used. Some same sequence variation causing disease for some sickle cell anemia, achondroplasia, same mutations in 99% cases or 100% cases will have the phenotype where you can do targeted mutation testing. Then spinal muscular atrophy is MLPA because deletion is a mutation. Specific testing like hemophilia A, whereas inversion mutation is some specific PCR. And some common mutations like thalassemia, cystic fibrosis, that common mutations can be screened before doing the advanced mutation testing. So for deletion duplication, always MLPA, MLPA, MLPA. So condition like DMD, 70% is deletion duplication. In SMA, 99% is deletion duplication. Whereas in case of a Gaucher disease, where you have to do gene sequencing, that particular gene can be sequenced. Whereas the next generation sequencing is an advanced platform technology where you can do the whole exome or whole genome can be sequenced. For example, in Akadi Gutierrez syndrome, where microcephaly is there, CD scan shows calcifications in the brain, but it is not toxoplasmosis. It is Akadi Gutierrez syndrome, but five or seven genes are involved. So you can do this panel testing and identify it and confirm the disease. Prenatal diagnosis has been done in next pregnancy because it is autosomal recessive disease. Here, you don't know the diagnosis, but two children are affected, microcephaly, same type of phenotype, affected with them are consanguineous parents. So we have done the whole exome to identify this WDR6. So it can be a panel testing or it can be a whole exome to identify the disease. Similarly, in deafness, multiple genes are there. There are more than 75 two genes. Two more minutes. Phenotype, we cannot Two more minutes, sir. Yes, yes. Deafness, we cannot identify. So directly we can do the exome testing where this all genes can be identified, tested in a single panel to look for the disease and look for the genetic counseling. So here we have done the carrier screening because two children are affected with the same disease, so corpus callosal agenesis. So we have done the baby's DNA is not available. So parents testing has been done, which identified a pathogenic homozygous. They both of them are heterozygous carriers. So probably baby is affected with the homozygous. So we can do genetic counseling in next pregnancy. But situation is the last case. Situation is not easy always. Here you can see that two children are affected. Both are mental retardation. So I thought probably it would be a chromosomal abnormality or an exome problem. But we have done the testing because both are having global developmental delay, facial dysmorphism, etc. But interesting thing, one child is having a 1P36 deletion. Another children is having duplication, duplication 11. Totally different chromosomal abnormality. Parents are absolutely normal. Both has been identified by microarray. So when you are applying a genetic testing, you have to look for analytical validity. Is there is a test accuracy? Clinical validity is degrees to which test correctly predicts the presence or absence of the disease. Or clinical utility is a degree to which 
they really test guides clinical management. All these principles has to be followed before administering a genetic test to the patient and always pre-test counseling and post-test counseling should be done. So take home message is genetic counseling is an integral part of management in any genetic disorder. That is a pediatrician should understand any genetic disorder, you have to do genetic counseling. And prenatal diagnosis is possible in various genetic disorder once a confirmation of diagnosis in the proband has been done. And definitive diagnosis is most important, which requires various genetic tests. And appropriate genetic tests should be ordered and applied depending upon the situation, considering various principles of, of genetic testing. Thank you very much for patient listening. I will try to answer any queries it comes to the discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for the excellent lecture. We'll have questions at the end, at the end of the session for all the speakers. Uh, thank you, sir, once again. And can you stop sharing your slides, sir? Thank you.